Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 649. And we have with us Dr. Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Welcome back. <laughs> it's one of those shows again. Uh, uh, speaking of which, uh, Gary, Gary, can you explain what our topic is today? Well, uh, as we'd like to have Dr. Angelini Cook with us, um, we're continuing the Landscape of Relationship series. And this time, we're going to talk about Semi 4. No, 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 no. Gary, no, no. That's the... <laughs> no. No, because it, it clearly says red flags, green flags. Yeah, yeah, but the semaphore <laughs> doesn't semaphore use semaphore is the art of communication things. using flags, right? But it's not colored. Specific. The color, the color of the flags are, aren't the same. It's it's different. At at at, at, at can you can you save us from is this it, insanity? Uh, yeah, is, so like wait i'm sorry what is semi for i've never <laughs> heard this before um give me a moment because i actually literally pulled it up because i was there like what the fuck flag semaphore is a semaphore system conveying information at a distance by means of visual signals with handheld flags rods disc paddles or occasionally bare or gloved hands <laughs> Ta-da. Oh my goodness! Boo, 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 boo. Did we just teach the doctor something new they weren't aware of before? Hold on. Well, this, oh. this ain't my field. I played this well, sound, it... but I wasn't sharing sound. Anyways, no, it's, it's not your area. That's this is more my this is more my husband's field of study. Ah, interesting. Now you oh, know. Okay, I know what that is. Yeah, you've you've seen it before. You just didn't know the actual word. Yeah, do, 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 boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. But not drill team are, are um, uh, oh, God, it just left my head. Color guard? Yes, color guard. Thank you. Yeah, not color, That's a different yeah, type of flag. Not, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, no, today we're going to be talking about a different kind of flagging system. Um, relationship red flags. And green flags. Um, I also threw in their yellow flags. Mm. And might as well make it a full get... spotlight or stop exactly. Um, and then we're gonna get kinky later. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I do the clean. yeah. So like, uh, people in here are familiar with like red flags, right? Mm. Um, like we've seen that mm. on social media. Ooh, girl, that's a red flag. Yes. Right. It has been um, memed to death for sure. Exactly. Like recently, I um, I tweeted that if you don't like Stephen Sondheim, that is a relationship red flag for me. <laughs> uh. Probably true. It's pretty harsh. I mean, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I'm not like an overall fan, but yeah, I don't not like him. But I'm just not funny. active in liking him. If you play it, I'd like it. I hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, but so re- relationship flags are indicators of healthy, unhealthy, and dangerous behaviors or feelings uh, within relationships. Um, so like I said, they can be 
uh, red, yellow, or green. Um, and I also think that it's important to mention that um, a lot of the, like when we talk about the red flags, I know I made a flippant comment, comment before, but sometimes we can sometimes say things are red flags when they really aren't red flags. Um, but when we're talking about red flags, I'm talking about things that are uh, abusive, right? Um, and typically um, are, you know, like these, these things can improve for a short period of time, but are typically cyclical in nature. Um, so when we're talking about the cycle of violence within relationships, th these are kind of the indicators that like, hey, you know, it may be a really good idea that you exit this, this relationship. Um, mm -hmm. So, so typical red flags, right, with this are that, uh, you know, when we are, when you can recognize controlling behaviors um, in your relationship, like your partner doesn't, uh, you know, your partner wants to have, um, you know, access to your schedules, to your phone, um, mm. you know, uh, has a lot of say over your uh, relationships with other people, Um mm -hmm. And, you know, it's also indica um, indicative of violence within relationships. That would be a huge red flag. Um, also emotional and verbal abuse. Um, uh, some other ones are intentional sabotage or hurting of feelings, right? Um, and, you know, even throw in um, gaslighting would be a good um, example of a relationship red flag. <clears throat> um, also like walking on eggshells, you know, like if you ever, if you're ever concerned about, well, I really can't say this because it's going to set them off. Mm. That's Whereas, a red flag. Whereas uh, analytics likes to say walking on broken glass. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, also, you know, we talked about uh, braving in one of the uh, one of the former uh, podcasts, uh, and one of the uh, the V in braving is uh, the vault, right? So, um, an example of a red flag within a relationship is if the person um, is using things against you that were told in confidence would be another uh, indicative uh, behavior of a red flag. Um, and you know, there's you know, you know, there's a bunch of red flags, um, but those are just some examples. Um, and usually, these are things that are uh, that can usually improve. But these are things that, like, we are not as a person in a relationship. It's not our responsibility, yeah, um, to uh, change somebody. If we if we can see these relationships, it's you know, it's probably a good sign, or it is a good sign that we that this relationship needs to end um, because we're not going to be able to change this other person. Uh, they need to do that on for themselves. And typically uh, with these kind of relationships, the other person is not aware, nor do they have any desire to change these behaviors. Yeah. yeah I was going to get asked about that. Cause it seems to me sometimes there are people that want to believe that these things will change. Um, that the, the behavior will get better, that it'll be, um, you know, we, we've heard it so many times in like cliche, like romance and high schools and all that stuff. Like I can fix them. Like, no, these are things that sometimes typically cannot be fixed. Um, not without someone outside of the relationship helping. And maybe even then, but the person that has the is you know demonstrating the red flag would have to seek that help. You know, we've talked about like you know acknowledging the problem is the first step kind of thing. Um, and uh, the issue or you know incidents with these kind of red flags sometimes is that they are kind of you need to get out. These mm -hmm. are not the these are not. These are, again, these are not things that you are going to be able to change or fix or duct tape together to make it okay. Um, uh, you know, kind of to throw a kind of trigger warning kind of thing. The typically 
if you if you watch any like I watch I will I'll own it. Um, I watch a lot of Law and Order Law, Law and Order SVU, um, and while it's not the like be all end all in regards to any of this this like topic, it does put glimpses and you know lights on some of these situations, um, escalating violence. You know, typically can you know is a big red flag. So just because he you know, hit you once and said he didn't mean it and he's sorry and he, you know, gave you flowers and whatever. Um, that's that's not okay. Mm-hmm. Putting your hands on someone for no reason or whatever reason, depending on what it is, is is not typically not okay. And more than likely, it's going to escalate. So, you know, if you can't get out, if you need help, get out, you know, to get out, then I think there's a link or information down below to kind of do those things. But like, I have, you know, again, knowing all the things and watching a lot of the TV show, it, it, we know that these cycles, these are cycles and they get bigger and more dangerous over time. Um, but I do have a question. Um, what if the red flags are harder to see? Like because. one of the, like one of the ones here. Um, um, the um, in, intentional. I was thinking intentional sabotage or hurting of feelings. I could potentially see that not necessarily being as well as visually as visual because they could be talking to their friends about you and they only do it when they're with, the, you know, when you're not in a room and you don't really know about it until somehow, some way you, you, you know, get knowledge of it. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> here's actually a really good uh, that. So what's not on there that probably should be on there is if you have family and friends, multiple family and friends who do not trust um, the your partner um, mm. because, you know, like sometimes we um, especially like we've talked about with um, in early relationships when we are in that um you know, the honeymoon phase, right? Sometimes we don't, sometimes it's hard for us to see those red flags. Um, so it's really important for us to rely on our support, um, our support. So if you have, you know, a few people in your life who are not trusting your partner um, and doesn't like your partner, that may be also a, um, a red flag. Um, and then, Also boundaries, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, having self-awareness and having uh, like a secure relationship with ourselves that we can see those things, right? Um, If, you know, we, if we're having a conversation with our partner and they are, you know, uh, like we recognize that like, oh, wow, that really hurt. I think we need the um, ability to be able to communicate that um, and mm-hmm. to know that we, um, you know, because that is part of relationships, right? Like we, you know, um, sometimes feelings are going to be hurt um, and that the, the, I think the key word here is intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times in relationships, the, the, the hurt feelings are unintentional. Um, but when we can recognize, wow, you, you did that on purpose, mm-hmm. right? Um, that, that would be a, that would be a huge red flag. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. unintentional is probably, hopefully followed by like some sort of remorse by the person being like, Hey, you hurt my feelings. And then they process that and Mm -hmm. so like intentional sabotage to me would be um uh 
um, like maybe um, like say you have an important job interview and they um, shut off your phone um, so you don't wake up for it or something like that. Mm. Or turn like, turn your alarm off or yeah. Or ask you to do something before you have to leave that takes longer than you need so you can get ready. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um picking fights right before an event. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, so you know, I think the key thing here is that these things are not things that we can change um, for the other person. Um, these are things that are going to require um, work on the person themselves, um, and uh, and that's that's a really important thing to remember um, that uh, these things are not our responsibility, um, and we do not need to think that they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's. It's best to cut and run at the at those times. Yeah. Get out, girl. Get out, girl. The <laughs> call's coming from inside the house. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yellow flags, though, these are um, what I would consider uh, things that I deal with on a on a a lot, right? Um, these are these are probably the things that are. Um, getting people to call me, right? Um, mm-hmm. So um, a lot of these are a lot of communication traps. Um, you know, one of them being all or nothing communication. Like, uh, you know, we've talked about that, right? Like, you never do that. You always do that, right? And also mm-hmm. using a lot of you language. Um, so a lot of like ineffective communication styles, um, uh the disrespect of boundaries, right? Like if I do set a boundary with you and you do not respect that boundary or you like push up against it multiple times, um, that would be an uh, indication of like a, hey, caution. Um, Also like codependency or enmeshment. um, And those are like when, you know, it's difficult to tell when you end and your partner begins. Um, So not having clear um, individuality within a relationship. Um, and I also think that a lot of these yellow flags are very common relationship issues, right? Um, and also, uh, difficulty with finding things in common with a partner. Um, you know, I think sometimes people get together just because they think it's a good idea to be together, not because they have anything in common. Um, Uh, And then also like lack of similarities with goals and values. Like if you find that, um, you know, you're going in one direction and your partner's going in in another direction and, or you have a lot of values that coincide, you know, like these are, these are um, things to consider. Right. Um, And, but like different from red flags, um, these, can be improved um, upon through, you know, your own, um, you know, seeking, you know, is it like, what can I change, right? Like, what do I have in my, in my control? What are out of my control? Are these things that, um, are these things that I can accept and, and work through? Um, And these are things that can be uh, typically, especially with communication, right? Like we can learn effective communication. We can learn how to set boundaries. Um, We can learn individual individuation in relationships. Um, Mm -hmm. We can, you know, and a lot of, a lot of these are very, like I said, very common things that, uh, that couples come to see me for. Mm. Uh, So you know, I th- and I also can see that the yellow flags are um, also in, like indications of some kind of uh, like attachment mm. patterns that are insecure, like, um, you know, anxious or avoidant attachment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, these are um, 
uh, these are important, right? Um, yeah. I, and, oh, was somebody no, no. gonna say something? No, I, I, I was gonna let you finish, but go ahead. Oh, no, um, I was, I think I was also gonna say that um, these are also things that we can have awareness to ask ourselves, do I do these things? Um, cause you know, by me saying they're common, right. We might fit into that category, right? Like sometimes I do use all or nothing communication, right? Uh, mm -hmm. so, sometimes when I want something, um, really bad, I can sometimes push boundaries. Um, and sometimes that's not always effective. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I can recognize that, you know, these are things that I can improve upon. I'm not perfect. Right. Yeah. I think you bring up a good point at about like not only being aware of what these things are, but if you're able to reflect on yourself and see, am I doing any of these things? Like, am I, am I unintentionally creating these things within my, my relationships? Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of, oh no, you're good. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of where my my head was going. Like this is like these are the things that you would need to maybe before you get into a relationship or or while you're in one to be like, like hmm, I'm seeing these patterns or I'm seeing this behavior, and I don't want it to become a problem. And if I can fix it myself. Or improve upon it on my on my own, great. But if I need to, I can seek professional help. Um, or if it's something that I don't think I, I don't know where the root of the you know the issue may be, um, maybe I should seek professional help to help me determine or discuss or figure out where that the root of that issue lies, or just more better communication. More better like you me. may have did you, like for the all for nothing it's like be like oh, wait a minute i do do that a lot you kind of be like i need to check myself and, and or maybe even have that discussion with with the uh other person in the relationship uh however they are labeled if labeled at all um say hey have you noticed that i did this and to be like yeah yeah you do that all the time oh yeah sorry about that i'm gonna try to do better on that I will say that, you know, one of the key things that has probably helped me the most is when people gave me the feedback, <clears throat> especially like finding the right time when I was open and willing to hear that feedback mm. about something that I was doing. Um, one of the most memorable uh, reflective like feedbacks I got was at my expense in terms of humor. Someone pointed out in a crowd of people that all knew me that I had this propensity to say a certain phrase. And while I admit in the moment it was like humbling and humiliating, like, it, and I wasn't a fan of it. Like it was a huge like lesson in how we sometimes have patterns of our own behavior. We're not aware of them until somebody points them out to us and they're, and especially if they're able to predict it. And be like, and this is when you, <laughs> blah, 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 you know, and I was kind of like, what? So, um, and I didn't forget it, uh, probably because, you know, I realized, you know, it very quickly, they started to figure out like, this may not have been comfortable for me. Mm. And so they tried, you know, their best to be like, you know, showing the humor in, in what they were attempting to say, because they, you know found it funny and it wasn't that you know that they were harming me they were just trying to be polite and say right this is something that you're known for and and when they started saying it i think they started to figure out i wasn't aware of that like they they were saying it i think initially because they thought i knew it mm. like i was intentionally always saying this kind of one phrase and then when they quickly realized that i didn't know that or wasn't aware of it, they tried to pivot and like, you know, not make it a, you know, more uncomfortable situation. 
But the reason I bring that up is I think it's about your personality and being open to understanding how you can be a better person Mm -hmm. and like being willing to receive that communication, that feedback, but it does, you know, take a time and a place and, you know, so I would take that into consideration. And, you know, like what we, uh, like we've talked about kind of with um, kind of creating that party, right. Uh, That, you know, we're going to have those people in our life that we value their feedback. We, we, we want them to be honest with us. And that requires a lot of vulnerability. Um, and, it, and it requires a lot of vulner- vulnerability to say to somebody that you really care about, hey, listen, this is something that I realized about myself and I'm trying to work on. If you hear me saying any of these things, um, if you could you know, just gently nudge me, um, I would really, really appreciate that uh, in order to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's fair. Like yeah, working so... on the all for nothing communication. If uh, anybody says, who says, you always do this, you could just come back and be like, do I really? Like 20% of the time? And then yeah. be like, uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know, I'm sure for it. Right. And then kind of get yeah. back to it. I think some of these, the yellow flags can also show up just as part of if you're having an argument. Potentially, Maybe yeah. it's not something that they typically do all the time, or uh, but for some reason you're frustrated with each other and things just kind of come out and they just want to push back because they're angry. And mm-hmm. then after the cool down, they, this is why they're yellow flags. They're like, eh, do we have a problem here? And then it's like, no, we're just having your argument. We have makeup sex and everything's fine. Or maybe we have a problem but we may be able to fix it or right. solve it right. um and maybe not in this exact moment but different different let's keep talking mm-hmm. keep keep t- let's keep communicating mm-hmm. about it to make sure that it doesn't become an issue in the future mm-hmm. um, yep. um everything has a range yeah and uh, kind of, uh, as Owen says in the um, group chat, um, in the live chat, um, it takes a lot of self-reflection to be able to recognize things within yourself and change them. That it does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes a lot of it, it takes a lot of bravery um, to do that as well. So I think we need to be uh, we need to remind if somebody is coming to us and you know, sharing that kind of self-awareness with us. Um, I think it's really important to validate that, you know, like, Hey, I think it's great that you can see that over yourself and, um, just kind of recognize the bravery of that is really cool. Maybe a neat little experiment for, for people to do is like, get a small red, yellow and, and green flag and just like, have them in your back pocket and then when somebody uh puts out something they that that might be a yellow flag plot the yellow flag wait a second and just wave it they call attention to it like soccer yeah i suppose except those are those are cards but oh i mean right, same right. idea no no well i mean one of the How's things it? i was just thinking about i'm like maybe that's something you develop in your communications with your your you know, loved ones, either your partners or, you know, friends, closest friends or family. It's like you come up with code words or ways to help, you know, explain what's happening in that moment. You know, if you mm. feel that they're, they might be exhibiting something. Alternatively, yeah. you can use hankies, but that might be a different conversation. <laughs> that That is a different conversation, um, especially with yellow flags. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about some let's talk about some green flags uh so you know usually when we are talking about flags um within you know these typically we we are just talking about the red flags and some I, and i i also think that some of the yellow flags um get grouped in with the red flags um mm-hmm. so i do want to you know just they are different um but we don't talk about green flags enough um, and we need to. So 
uh, with this is a lot of healthy communication, right? Um, a lot of assertive communication, right? Um, and if you want more information about that, we can we can definitely talk about that. Um, <laughs> Also respecting boundaries, right? We have an entire um, topic. I don't know what number it was on boundaries. Um, but there's also this really great book that I linked in that um, in that podcast about boundaries, um, which I think is a great resource. Um, and like what we what I talked about with uh, some of the yellow flags where there's not a lot of um, – um, or uh, there's um, kind of codependency going on. Um, being able to recognize the interdependence of the two people or three or four or, you know, however many people your relationship uh, constitutes, uh, the interdependence of that, that you are your own person and that there is the relationship itself. Um, that's really, really important. Um, and then... Also being supportive of each other's uh, goals and values um, can be another green flag. Um, and knowing each other's love languages um, can also be really helpful, right? To know how your partner wants to receive and also give love, right? So you can recognize that. Um and also just having the awareness that no relationship is perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. And that can really help and give both of you or multi multiples of you in relationship grace um, to know that sometimes there, sometimes that yellow flag is going to get waved and that's totally okay. And that, that, that yellow flag can turn into a green flag right. through, some, through some healthy communication. So FYI, everyone, um, boundaries and rules with COL 540 and love languages, just in case you want a refresher or want to have a conversation about that, with COL 636. Ta-da! Yay! Almost, I think yeah. it was over 100 episodes ago. Right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was technically... Landscape of Relationships Part Two, so that oh. gives you a good idea of how long ago this was. Hey, and uh, for those of you who want to quickly find it, you can also look into the Landscape of Relationship uh, uh, playlist on our YouTube page. There you go. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have been doing this for a little while now. Yes, we yeah. sure have. Yeah. And... You know, it's funny because I, I went to CubsOutloud.com ding, and typed into the search boundaries and I got page after page of the search of like LOR episode, LOR episode. L and I was like, oh, we talk about this a lot. Yeah. It is, it's, it, <laughs> it, it I mean, somebody puts that in the tags. A lot. Yeah. Me. I don't know. Uh, it's almost like boundaries is important or something. Yeah. Who know who 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 would have thought? Geez, why why are I mean boundaries? Who needs boundaries? I know oh. I'm developing this whole like thing on boundaries, um, which maybe we'll talk about uh, later. Also, um, the campfire, uh, which will be a future episode at some point, uh, at some point, um, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, um, hint to the hint, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, um, I do agree with you, Ed, that green flags aren't talked about a lot. Um, it has been brought up in recent, like months, years, um, through memes and whatever, kind of like, you know, here are your red flags, what are your green flags? And kind of like the memes for red flags, the memes for green flags can be kind of ridiculous, you know, like things like he, you know, if he brings you, like, if he knows your coffee order kind of thing, like, that's a green flag kind of thing. It's like, like, uh, you know, yes and no. Those kind of, those ones are kind of, like, cheeky and in fun. But I agree with you. Like, communication, obviously, and boundary respect are, like, big ones. They're, they're um, important to any relationship, whether it's friends, um, coworkers, um, family, 
there it's kind of a big one that's very important in all those kind of relationship dynamics. Um, because I mean, we can we can be honest with each other. Sometimes our abilities can be to communicate with others is not always the greatest for one reason or another. Um, even if it's your partner um, or your friend. Yeah. Yeah. A slight caveat in your example, which is a great example, uh, for green flag. Someone who confirms you want your usual coffee. Yes. But they don't ask what it is. They say, would you like your usual? And then you can say yes. And then they get you exactly what you want because, you know, your coffee your typical coffee order but then you could be like mm, actually i would like a caramel macchiato right now yeah fair 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 yes fair good eye or good ear yeah good whatever yeah <laughs> good. It, was, it, was, it was it was an expansion to to what you said but it it's but it's the truth like yeah. that's the thing too like just because i again like you like we've talked about before just because i like this every time doesn't mean I want it every time. Sometimes I want something different. Maybe I want um, a caramel macchiato. Maybe I just want an iced tea. Like, but you you wouldn't know that if you didn't ask. Yep, like we've <laughs> talked about with sex and pizza. Right? <laughs> right, I don't always want pepperoni in my pizza. Sometimes I want black olives. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's good to switch it up every every once in a while. Yeah. That's why I think everybody should at least try everything on the menu and then decide mm-hmm. what the usual is. I just don't want anchovies. Fuck that. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't I don't think I could I just I mm, yes, agreed. I don't I don't Anchovies belongs in Worcestershire sauce. Oh my gosh, pineapple on pizza is a red flag for me. <laughs> I mean, I like pineapple on pizza when I'm in the mood, but I can go without it. It's no big deal. Yeah. Kind of have to be in the mood for it. I will I will admit that too. Like it's not an awful thing, but if it's just the only thing that's there, I may have to pass. Um <laughs> I may have to order out. <laughs> order something else. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, respect just... to one's one's uh, uh, taste. You know. There you go. It, it may not be yours, but maybe somebody else's. And as long as you get what you want, they get what they want, then they're good. Right? Mm. <laughs> I just wanted to point out the irony of a bunch of gay men having this discussion about what they will and won't put in their mouth. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's true though. You ain't wrong. Shade. I'm just no, 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 no. Wrong flag. Fact. Not, not, not shade. Fact. Fact. Here's the thing. I'm listening to these to these uh, self-identified gay men talk about what they will and won't put in their mouth, and I was like, really? Like there were. I almost typed in and was like, like you haven't had worse things in your mouth. That like whatever these things are that you don't want. I don't to know. Okay. Uh, it, all the things you're implying about uh, uh, implying about are good things to put in my mouth. I mean, to be fair, Owen has it right. He says sometimes I just like garlic salt, salted booty hole. You know, it's it's a personal preference thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was wondering how to pull that into the show. Oh. <laughs> oh. Damon, you will never live just, that down, especially considering just, I kept just, the cl- I have the clip just, on the uh, YouTube page. Sprinkle it on there. There you go. There you go. That's right. I'm just gonna fall so, into it because I'm done. So mm-hmm. should we get kinky? Should we get kinky? Absolutely. Uh, have we, I mean, have we not already? <laughs> is, is, is not putting garlic salt on a beautiful <laughs> kinky enough already? Well, yeah. Um, I think that's. I, mean, you, I think that's the segue. Just. Uh, I think so too. Mm. Um, it up, have a taste. Let's, let's get kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little rim tear and have a taste. Yep. Have, there we go. Have a lick. <laughs> oh man. Well, so um, you know, if we're talking about red flags and green flags, um, I also did some diving, 
and found some resources for red flags and green flags and kink uh, dynamics. Um, that first one? Right. 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 Go ahead. You, you keep going. Uh, I'm, so, I'm... Yeah, well, yeah. So, so we'll start with, um, so I found red flags and green flags, but like what we talked about, there is total room for yellow flags in here. Um, so I think that we can apply the same logic to yeah. those yellow flags to this too. And we'll, mm -hmm. we can discuss that, but so red flags and kink uh, dynamics, right? And so I'm going to start with a uh, D type and then S type. So um, expect you immediately to obey them and call them by an honorific or a title before agreed upon and or calling you a title or um, honorific immediately before agreed upon. Um, I wish I had a red flag just like, you're surrounded by them in you the background. You are, Damon. <laughs> just, I just, I just, I, I, I know you. Know there's more here, but that one is like, so it, if you are ever online, and I'm gonna just anyone out there who can hear this podcast or whatever, if you are ever online, are at a bar, particularly maybe a kink leather bar or whatever, are a play space. And someone walks up to you and immediately wants you to call them sir or calls you a boy or a sub or whatever. Um, big fat red flag because those words and titles are typically earned and are part of a dynamic that has been established. They are, there are very few exceptions. And as someone who has been in a kink lifestyle as long as I have, I can potentially call, if you are introduced in that way, I may potentially call you a certain name, but that relationship, that dynamic does not reflect on me. You do not get to because you are this title, you not then get to use your title to make me submit to you. Mm. No, no. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if you, if you encounter someone online and they immediately say, you call me sir or whatever, Nine times out of ten, it's probably spam. But um, uh, if it's an actual person, um, just hit that wonderful little block delete button in the corner and move on. They, yeah. You have no time. There's no time. You have no time for that. There's no need for that in your life. Well, and and I think what gets a little confusing for folks is I think there are people that co-opt the DS like relationship dynamic in different spaces. And mm -hmm. so I don't want to say they pervert it, but they they just take it in a different direction. And it is not mm -hmm. the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if there is somebody online in a in a web application or a website or whatever that has this, you know, concept, I think it's important to understand role play and how that could be a portion of this. And perhaps like this is not going through the 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 channels of a discussion about like honorifics and like boundaries and those kind of things. So to me, it's like, it, like I would pay attention to a, a series of things, but yeah, this is definitely a big one. You know, it, I don't know. I, I, I don't really engage mm -hmm. with people who like, you know, have this about them. And I've also seen it outside of the kink world as well. Like I've seen people who get really bent out of shape because their honorific or title is not utilized. Mm. And there's a part of me that's mm. like, baby, I get it. Like no, no one present is this about, um, but I get it. Like you went through all of this like process to get this title, to get this honorific. Like you, you know, have the education, the background, the debt, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know you that way. 
Mm-hmm. So, and if we don't have that kind of a relationship, then I'm not going to run around and call you by your name, like your title or whatever, your honorific, just because you happen to have one. And mm-hmm. what's worse is I see that this usually gets blown out of proportion because it's it, it's at a, like, it wasn't done intentionally to slight them, but they feel slighted. Mm-hmm. And then they make an issue of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, baby, I didn't know that you were a pastor. Like, calm the fuck down. <laughs> or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I just, and so, yeah, I'm like, you know, yeah, that that's, so not to take it out of cake, but it was just like, there's, there's other ways I think that this could happen. Uh, no, I think that brings up a really good point about space and, uh, and knowing where you are, right. And as somebody who just changed his, had his honorific changed, <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Um, like I, I'm having those conversations a lot and feeling very uncomfortable uh, about that, uh, you know, because it's huge uh, and it it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, like, but you bring up a really good point that it's about location. It's about space. Um, and, you know, I don't expect the clerk at Wawa to call me doctor. Um, <laughs> but well, Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> right, but if I'm in front of a classroom, right, and I'm teaching, yeah, you that would be a perfect opportunity for you to call me doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my clients call me doctor, which feels weird, but I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you know, there are times where, you know, I, I, to bring this back to kink, right, where people have called me daddy or... I have called other people daddy or, you know, uh, and, and I'm like, I recognize that we're using this, this playfully. Right. Um, And if I was in a different space, um, that would be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Um, That wouldn't be appropriate. Yeah. Like if we're at the leather bar, like chit chatting around and having a little fun time and you go, Hey daddy, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, okay, that's cute. You know, I- I'm not a daddy. Don't, you know, I may respectfully be like, mm, don't call me that. But like, if I'm walking in the park with you no know, <laughs> walking in nature with the children, walking with the children <laughs> in nature, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, just walking out, you know, walking around and you yelled across the way, like, Hey daddy, I, I might, no, I wouldn't, Mike. I pro- I will give you a look, um, and more than likely ignore you, and move on. And if you are a friend, and you ask me about it later, uh, I will say, "Bitch, you knew where we were. Like, what? Do you, what were you thinking? Like, I was. I was. <laughs> did you not see what was going on? This is not the place for that. There's. This is not the time to be cute." Yep. Location, mm. location, location. Truth. Right. I mean, like, I, I think of it this way, you know, like, uh, this is the first thing that came to mind when David was just giving that, you know, kind of comment. I was like, right. So if you're in the play space, that is probably not the time to be like, hey, girl. Because that's not the place for that. I mean, again, if context, but, you know, again, yes, if you're in a scene. Or if you're, again, if you're in a scene with someone else Mm -hmm. and you, like a third party, kind of walks in and sees like a friend you know, it might not be appropriate. It might not be the time, the place to be yelling out like, hey, girl, or who to, you know, you know, kind of, this is not the time to be like, you know, kikiing. Right. Like, this is a, this is a, Potentially, depending on the nature of the scene, it's the potentially, you know, we're already, like the sub is already, yeah, yeah, it's a potentially damaging moment. It'll break the scene. It has the potential to break a scene. Right. Um, or distract. Distract them at, at the least. Yep. And that's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, other red flags, right, are uh, that like when people don't ask you about your hard or soft limits, um, I, you know, yes. (laughs) Um, 
tell you what real or true submissive or a dominant does. Um, that so that also will fall into the first one. Sometimes that falls into the first one. Well, I think it's a big red flag in many circles when anyone tells you the the real or true definition of blank. Mm. Like there's there's a time and a place when you're like trying to help educate somebody and it might be like trying to correct them a little bit like it will be like, well, actually, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's kind of a, a soft way to do something. But I've been in many circles, not just kink, like professional circles. I mean, like where people are like, well, blah, 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 da, 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 da. and to me, that's a red flag about you as a person. Because mm. I'm like, oh, OK, girl. <laughs> Be all end all, know it all. Mm -hmm. Right. How about you pull mm -hmm. the panties out of your ass crack a little bit? You seem uncomfortable. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't say that out loud. I mean, it's a thought in my head, you know, because I'm like, the fuck? Ooh, girl. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. 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 Keep, we should keep going. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is one that I've heard of a lot. Uh, this this isn't just in kink dynamics, but separating you from family and friends, um, and in this kind of dynamic, like kinky friends, mm. Uh, mm. can be a really um, that's a huge red flag. Uh, Absolutely. So that's also part of that whole community thing, right? If you yeah. you know if you don't hear from somebody for a little bit, right? Um, might want to check on them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, that one's, that one's a big one. And for, for many of us in the kink and bear community, we all have heard the, the horror stories of some of these separations from loved ones and family and friends. And it, it's, it is a, it's a definite red flag. It can, it definitely, feels odd um kind of for one reason or another having to rely solely on the only other person that you're allowed to contact mm. or be in contact with um that doesn't feel right you know what i mean like it doesn't it it even in any kind of relationship dynamic not just kinky but that doesn't feel right so you're saying I'm not allowed to have anyone else, including like family. Like, no, I don't. That has never sat well with me. If you are a person that wants to be on your own, more power to you. You can, you, if you can do that and be your, you know, self-dependent and what have you, that's your choice. Um, but to be intentionally separated and isolated, yeah, that that does not that that doesn't sit well. That doesn't sit mm -hmm. well with me, not one bit. And then, as the um, as the sub, right? Uh, you know, a red flag is to expect the dominant to take full responsibility for uh, for their health and well being, both physically and emotionally. Um, that's also a, the huge red flag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, oh, and then I skipped one. Um, telling you that they have no limits and expect you also to have no limits as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a huge... Yeah. Ugh. Okay, I mean, usually... Yeah. Usually a person who says they have no limits has a limit. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. I've heard so many doms make jokes about this when someone comes up to them and they're like, oh, I'm a sub and I have no limits. And then the, the dom has like a, a, a waiting in their back pocket kind of comment like, okay, well, I need you to go do blank. Like just to see the look on the sub's face mm -hmm. because it's usually pretty something drastic and yeah. possibly disgusting. Yeah. So for, for, again, like online, what have you, spaces, whatever, um, et cetera, et cetera, 
um, this is one of those big ones as well. Like, I, I, I've heard it all the time. Um, I put one fucking picture of myself with a with holding a flogger, one of my recent pictures, and I can't tell you how many people that have come out of the woodwork. It's like, oh, well, you da 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 with me, and I'll have the conversation. And I'll start ha- having a conversation, and I'll ask, you know, so what are what are your limits, or what are you looking for? Anything, okay? Um. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a immediate. Maybe you double check, I'm, being like, "Are you sure?" Okay, we're gonna start low. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, no, no, no. Work our way. Up. I, I mean, I, it's not often I meet somebody who's into having their nuts smashed between two bricks, but okay. I mean, um, I have a friend that they like they someone. No says, limits. Okay, no let limits. me get the bricks. Yeah. What are you like, gonna use those like, for? We're gonna smash your nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, what? No. Yeah, I thought you said uh, no limits. Right, right, right. You said no. Okay, so so you do have a limit. Okay, let's okay. let's have that conversation. Let's get this started. Let's actually pause and you you should you should explain to me what you don't want. I had I w- one Go ahead. guy um who was all about like oh you can do whatever you want with me, yada 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 and I was like Okay, well, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to start slow because I think you have limits and you just don't know them yet. I took maybe two swipes with the flogger on them, not even hard. Mm -hmm. And they're like, nope, no, no. And I'm like, okay, baby, um, this isn't even level one. Um, (laughs) And again, you know, you know, I, I, I will respect, I stopped obviously, you know, cause they said stop, but like, okay, I need you, you're going to now have to talk to me because that was the lightest I can do. That was the gent, well, kind of the gentlest I can go without it being basically nothing. So I need you to tell me and be honest with me about what you're looking for in this moment. Because if you can't talk to me about it and I can't gauge it, then we're going to, this is going to be a, this, you're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to get anywhere. Yep, you're not going to get any, anything out of this, and I'm not either. Yeah, because we're going to have to start and stop, and I'm going to be holding a lot back because I can't, I won't, I can't get you to tell me if you're not going to tell me. So we're just going to keep doing this. I'm going to be hesitating, and you may be flinching, and I will see you flinching, and then I will stop then too. You may not say no or red or whatever safe word we say. But if you're flinching at every turn, every pass or any pass, all right, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a small problem. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Um mm. uh, also uh a red flag is dismiss uh dismiss options. Mm. Um. What was that though? Dismiss options or dismiss dismiss opinions. Dismiss opinions. See, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Which explains why all of us were kind of quiet. Like, we were like, huh, huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Um so I and I will say this um cuz I've I've known many I know many a dom who have um I won't use the word but it's not sub it's the other word um in their life and when you're at that level usually in that dynamic you have they are taking control 
the Dom has taken control of the majority of your life. Having said that, though, that does not mean that you don't have a say. That does not mean that you don't have a choice or an option or an opinion. You're not allowed to express your opinions. If you don't like something, you should be able to say you don't like something. The, the Dom may, through your relationship dynamic, know a lot about you and may be able to gauge what you do and don't like without potential conversations regarding consent and whatever, ever. but you still have an opinion because you're still a human being. And that Dom even in that kind of relationship dynamic will still respect your opinions and listen. Mm -hmm. And if it, you know, affects you, they should act accordingly. It's uh, one of the analogies I like to think whenever I think of a, a relatively healthy Dom's up relationship is there's a difference between who's in control and who has control. The Dom mm. may be in control, but the sub really has control. Yep. Because they're letting the Dom do the whatever the Dom's doing. So kind of like if you think like a gaming controller. I own the controller, but I can give that controller to somebody else. But it's still my controller. It's just in the hands of somebody else. Fair. I like that. Um, and then the last one is to dictate how the dynamic will go. Um, that's another red flag because the sub should be like what Jeff just said, right? Um, we're operating within what the sub is comfortable with doing. Um, that's that's the controller, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's what that's what I can do. Um, and yeah, it's about you yeah. <laughs> and what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it in green flags, but there's there are ways to push boundaries in a dom sub dynamic keep dynamic respectfully. Mm -hmm. But directly dictating how this is gonna happen, no, that's not like that's not how this is gonna go. Um Some I had a one of my one of the biggest red flags online for me, um, I had a guy on a site uh, message me, and it was basically like four or five run-on sentences, but it described the entirety of what they wanted me to do to them from start to finish. Everything. Well, not everything. Like, like I want you to do this, and then we're gonna we're gonna do this for a while, and then we're gonna move to here, and then we're gonna be doing this, and then at the end of that, we're gonna go to sleep, and then while we're asleep, you're gonna be doing this while I'm asleep, and then we'll wake up the next day, and then we'll do it all again. And I'm like, um, uh, let me check my phone. I don't recall you submitting a deposit for me to be paying for this, like to pay for this like amount of my time. Um, I don't recall this being a, a, a transaction that I had agreed to. So um, he was immediately blocked without any response back because I do not play that way. You do not tell me what we're doing from start to finish. I have a say. Because mm -hmm. I'm part of this mm -hmm. scene too, or this moment as well. And I don't care um, how amazing you think you are in bed and how hot you think you are. Um, but I'm just because you have all this, whatever, doesn't mean that you get to say 
what I have to do to you. You know. Right. So. Now we can talk about it <laughs> and develop something and then play it out. But we're not we're not dictating A, B, C, D, E, F, G before we've even had two seconds of a conversation. Mm-hmm. Not to say you can't propose it. But you have to be open to for modifications. It's again it's a negotiation. It's like, okay, so well, here's what I'm thinking. I think we'll have twenty minutes of dick sucking. Uh, and then we'll uh, uh, go into like a little makeout session into uh, fucking, and then we'll go we'll go to sleep. But while I'm asleep, you can you'll go ahead and uh, start fucking me to wake me up in the morning, and and then there'll be a little more uh, uh, there'll be some shower play and then dick sucking. But that's going to be like twenty minutes each. <laughs> well, baby, if you want to time, we're gonna it, we're then... gonna go to bed and go to sleep at a precisely such and such a time. And then you'd be like, here's my proposal. And be like, no. Like, I, no, you're not, no. I was Unless busy we're thinking. playing fucking chess, like. <laughs> I was busy thinking about what David said. They were being, you know, very specific. I was like, ooh, girl, like, I don't, I don't know any dog that would be, you know, wanting a sub to come to them and be like, okay, so. We're gonna. I'm gonna get flogged, and it's gonna be for exactly eight minutes. And there's gonna be 16 impacts, and they're gonna escalate, or you know, if evolve from like a level four to a level 12. Over, you know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. what I was imagining, and I was like, "Girl, right." My safe oh, word uh, is this emphasis to, on this syllable. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, some people might be into that. I mean, yes, and you if know, you're into that. Absolutely. Yes. Like, if you want to be precise as a clock, then yes. Like, if you are that. If you are an efficiency expert and you expect your entire life to be efficient. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, what's his name from the the pajama game. The therapist in me is coming out. (laughs) You might have some problems. Right. No, like, (laughs) hey, sounds like you might want to work on your control issues. I can help you with that. A little OCD there. Just a little. Right. What would it be like for you to submit control? Mm. That might be a little. Anyway, sorry. We should. We should. Mm. Sorry. (laughs) Moving on. Yeah, we've we've dug into the forte. uh, uh, Excuse me. The fort of uh, Damon. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, So. He's going to go off on basically everything. So let's yeah. talk about some green flags. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so actually, while I was while I was reading this list, I was like, oh, I do these things. Mm-hmm. I feel good about myself. All right. So <laughs> um, wanting to get to know you on a deeper level and having an interest in more than just your kinks and sexual preferences. Um, I love that. Um, I think that's really important. Um, you know, I want to know if you like Stephen Sondheim, um, because (laughs) if you don't, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to block you. That's a red flag. (laughs) Um, (laughs) again, more hyperbole, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is more hyperbole than anything else. I just think I agree with that one wholeheartedly. Because it's because depending on the nature of your dynamic, it's going to be more than just like what happens in the bedroom or in the play space. It should be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because again, we're all human, and that interaction is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, this one is written. This one's just kind of at the core <laughs> of like 
green flags within kink dynamics, but uh, they won't do anything without your express consent, uh, and they will respect your stated boundaries and limits as well as sharing their own, uh, you know, like we kind of talked about, negotiation is really important. Um, and that's also where I think that kink dynamics um, really overlap, overlap very, very well with healthy communication styles. Um, so we can learn a lot from kink. Um, this, and... would be, this would be an appropriate pl- time for both uh, Gary and David to flash their t-shirts. <laughs> Absolutely. Hold on. This. Here we is... go. Yeah. <laughs> Love. And, and we also have a a king theme one as well. Yes, Le- leather flag. Leather, leather. It's not specifically king. And um, pop. Pop. Yeah. <laughs> so consent is really important. Um kind of at the core of all of this um mm-hmm. uh, also they're interested in hearing about your journey in kink as well as what turns you on and off um along with your opinions on how you'd like your dynamic to grow right. um i had a really great conversation with somebody about that um which was awesome and i felt just joyous on the other side of it because they were interested to hear my journey and what I wanted um, out of this uh, and they were very excited um, it was it was really good I think again um, these are tenants mm-hmm. to really healthy communication and yeah. vulnerability and intimacy yeah I like that one particularly because um if you are a dom and you know what gets your sub going, you can use that mm-hmm. in 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 good ways and and potentially you know punishment ways if if you if you if this is a that kind of dynamic situation. Um, because it's it's a lot of it's a and it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun when you know what the person wants to do or likes to do especially when you do it unexpectedly exactly the surprise and, the surprise good feels yeah and if you flag that green if you fly that green flag um that can open the door to potentially finding out any possible red or yellow flags that your partner may have that you mm-hmm. can kind of help with yeah Right. Exactly. Like if they if they say, oh, I'm brandy new and I don't you know, that's a really good time to, for have a conversation about rack and mm-hmm. uh, and consent and and these, you know, really important tenants in kink dynamics. Right. Um, so, uh, like I said before, with some red flags, right, that whole isolation piece. So a uh, 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 a, a green flag component to that is uh, that they respect your existing friendships and relationships, even if they may not be directly introduced to other important people in your life. Because as we know, in kink circles, um, you may never uh, meet the the important people in your partner's life because mm-hmm. that's just not the yeah. way that they, that that's that's just not part of the dynamic and. Yeah for a lot of reasons yeah sometimes this is your your kink play is your escape whether you know dom or sub or whatever and you don't want or need the your family or friends or whatever to necessarily know about it not that it's a secret kind of thing but this is your like i said this is your escape this is your thing that you do when you need to relieve some stress um and that's perfectly okay, but that means like your dom sub, depending on what you're doing, they may not be involved in your life. And you could have that conversation and let them know, 
and they can be if they are understanding of that great green flag like this is the way to keep going if they have to know the people in your life and meet them or whatever um you you know i you'd want to know i'd want to know why yeah that may be that may be a red flag exactly um, but it could but but i would also say the need to to you know we're doing something really intimate and really vulnerable with the other person so i can totally understand that that feeling of loss and longing to know the other person that you're with i feel mm-hmm. like is normal and um that is normal so i think that just acknowledging that and making room for that is really important um but yeah, uh, if boundaries are really important, if, and if uh, if I don't want to, um, I don't. I want to keep that part of my life sacred. Um, mm-hmm. I have, you know, I I can say no. I can say, you know, I don't. I do, you know, I I don't think I want to enter into this if I can't know all of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's fair. And if that's part that's of the conversation. Totally fair. And if that's part of the conversation, then you can go, okay, well, if that's not what you want, then by all means, like you can say, well, we're not going to be a match. And green flags, green yeah. flags. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, green. and it, and that the green, if they do end up getting introduced, it's probably more of your relationship has evolved beyond the little kinky yeah. bubble. So you may yeah. still do that kinky bubble, but be like, now you're starting to get to know the person more yeah. and then sometimes instead of doing anything kinky you're just kind of like hanging out you end up being boyfriends and then it's like hey i spend a lot of time with you not necessarily in kink space um i think maybe we should i'm going to invite you over to thanksgiving dinner or something you know yeah and and then you can end up meeting these people but not necessarily a priority when it comes to the kinky space Exactly. So that may that may just be a part of your dynamic, um, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But also having feelings of longing and uh, desiring that is also normal, mm-hmm. um, and something that can be talked about. Damon, you okay? I just hit the back of my neck with my nail. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> mm, anyway, well. Uh, um. So also important, you know, green flags and kink are uh, the emphasis on safety, consent, negotiation, and safe words, and kinky dynamics, and um, taking responsibility for, uh, for their own actions, for your own actions, understanding that you're not the cure for their problems. Mm. Um, so, you know, those are... That's where the whole interdependence kind of comes in that, you know, your feelings or your responsibility um, and, you know, taking responsibility is really important. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, um, you know, if you do feel, though, um, you know, after this uh, discussion that you are that you are in a dangerous relationship structure situation, um, you know, I would want for anybody to contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline, eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three. Um, you know, they can help provide you with resources and connect you with services. Um, and, you know, we also put in some uh, other resources. Uh, surprisingly, the YWCA um, has wonderful resources for domestic violence, um, which is where I got a lot of the information for the red, yellow, and green uh, lights. Um and you know also put in some information like i said so it's the the information that i got from the uh the red and the green flags and kink dynamic came from kink 101 um which is a wonderful website uh for information on kink 
Mm. Nice. Thank you, Ed. You're so welcome. Did, Good did stuff. you just say? I heard. <laughs> I heard you say say thank you, Dad. <laughs> But you might have said, thank you, Ed, and I miss her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait yeah. a minute. Did we? That would be, that would be door oh, number no, two. No. Did we just talk about this? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that is not okay. It's like, I'm like, it took me a moment. And I'm like, oh, I think he said to Ed, but I heard dad. Uh, that's me. That's me. That was on me. Red flag. <laughs> red flag. Perhaps I was like, red flag. Bird. Oh no, no, no! It's fine. It's, it's, a, it's a green flag. It's fine. <laughs> My ears were perhaps, failing me. Perhaps you heard what you wanted to hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. All I can say is I've accepted myself as being a daddy cub, but that's about it. All right. Any final thoughts? <laughs> get out of here. I'm good. I'm good. All right. <laughs> <sighs> um, that phone number will be in the show notes as well as in the description I'm actually specifically going to put it into the description of YouTube because of YouTube I don't put the whole show notes uh, but it will be there uh, so uh, if you are I think you're in one of these relationships give them a call but National Domestic Violence Hotline 1-800-799-7233. We want you all to be nice and safe. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you can find those show notes also at CubsOutLoud.com, where you can leave a comment on the blog. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any other topic ideas you would like us uh, to discuss, either in landscape or relationships with uh, Dr. Ed here, or... Uh, Otherwise, you can shoot us an email at comes out loud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at comes out loud in the appropriate place in the URL. You can also join our entourage chat uh, on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to see when we're planning or recording these episodes, you can uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You know, various accoutrements such as a now is for your sticky here's for your cookie shirt or a consent is for foreplay shirt in various different styles. Over at Zazzle at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy. In fact, these two designs were designed by Smashy. Um, you can get more of his work over at tpublic.com slash user slash mashy the bear. You can also subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you just want to send us a donation to keep the lights running on the on the podcast, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us, subscribe to us, uh, and, various, and review us on various platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon Audible, and Spotify. In any place you can get podcasts, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Pet, Box Puppy, Box Cup, Box something or other, or Windjum, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where we play bears and dragons. We're a bunch of sturdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on as Theater Cub 79, that's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And Dr. Ed, if folks would like to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Well, there's a few places. So you can find me on Facebook at um, Edward AC. Um, you can check out my business website at eactherapy.com. Um, and then as far as like other socials, um, you can find me as uh, dr.unicub79 on the Tickety Talks and um, dr.unicub underscore sex brain wizard on Instagram. And then I'm also on Twitter at Eddie E D D I E H Cook, um, which is safe for work, and then 
Jeep Daddy 3, uh, which is not safe for work. Uh, and I do not need any. So just send me a message to let me know who you are. Mm-hmm. It's true for writing over right now, so FW counts. And with that, I can hit these buttons, which I should have been doing earlier, and say, say goodnight, everybody! Goodnight, everybody! Goodnight, everybody! Ciao for now. Bye!